Welcome, I'm Kari Manzo with Ramsey County Public Health and um, St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health and Social Services are partnering to host Facebook streams to promote awareness of mental health and well-being. Um, mental health is a widespread health part, um, problem and it impacts everyone no matter age, income, race, ethnicity or gender and more more than half of the populations do not access services due to barriers and stigma. And especially in the time that we're in right now with COVID-19 pandemic, it's even harder to get access, access those resources. So uh, we wanna take a chance to open this conversation and answer common questions that people might have around mental health. And especially this topic today, we have maternal uh, mental health and we have Cynthia Fundred, Fundred and she will um, introduce herself and then we'll go into some common questions. So Cynthia, if you wanna just introduce yourself and the role you have. Sure. So as Carrie said, my name is Cynthia Fondrick. I'm a public health nurse here with uh, Ramsey County Public Health. And you know, I work with moms and babies in our family wellness unit. I also am also a labor and delivery nurse at one of the local hospitals. And I have uh, experience in not just labor and delivery, postpartum care, as well as helping mamas deliver in uh, independent birth centers. So maternal health is a great passion of mine. And I'm excited to be here with you all uh, presenting the topic of maternal mental health, particularly perinatal depression. Great. So um, can you explain a little bit what postpartum depression is? Is it the same as the baby blues? Absolutely. So let me first back up first and talk about the big umbrella of perinatal depression. And that's uh, depression that happens in pregnancy, around childbirth, or within that first year postpartum or after the delivery of baby. And as Carrie said, the most well-known one is postpartum depression or depression that happens after the birth of baby. And perinatal depression is a real medical illness that doesn't discriminate based on age, race, income, culture, or education. And the big one, postpartum depression, affects about up to 15% of moms. So everybody says, well, isn't that the baby blues? And the baby blues is this term that we commonly use um, to describe, you know, those mood changes and irritability and tearfulness and confusion and unhappiness and exhaustion and fatigue that a lot of women experience after they have babies in those first two weeks. Um, and studies show that 15 to 85 percent of moms experience the baby blues and it's normal. Taking care of a baby is an around the clock job. Babies don't follow cultural clocks you know, when it's time to eat, sleep, have their diapers change, they when they need you, they just need you. Um, and being a new mom, whether it's your first baby or your 10th baby, it's hard work. So no wonder women feel tired and overwhelmed. But these symptoms should ease and start getting better around that two week mark. But sometimes the mood changes are severe and the other symptoms are severe. And they last longer than two weeks and they don't improve. And this is no longer the baby blues. This is postpartum depression. So I always tell my mom, if you watch this like Disney movie and you start crying or you go on Facebook and you're looking at cute cat and dog pictures and you like start crying in those first two weeks after birth, that's okay. If you're still crying six hours later and you start spiraling downhill, you know, and this is continuing across those two weeks and it's not getting better, then it's probably a time to have a conversation about whether it's really baby blues or postpartum depression. And Cynthia, what can cause um, paternal depression? Yeah, so we don't really have uh, one cause identified as being responsible for postpartum depression or perinatal depression, but we do know there are multiple factors that put women at risk for developing um, perinatal depression and postpartum depression. So there's really four. The first one is the one that everybody talks about, which is that shift in hormones that happens 
you know, in pregnancy and particularly post delivery for postpartum. And if you as a woman have always been kind of sensitive and we all know who we are to those hormonal changes that happen in our bodies, you know, so if we're in that population, we might be at slighter higher risk for developing postpartum depression. So for example, progesterone levels and estrogen levels both drop really rapidly in those first in the two weeks to a month during the postpartum period and that's associated with insomnia so you can imagine taking care of a baby and not sleeping are good recipes for experiencing major fatigue and exhaustion another factor is psychological um in what I mean by that there are psychological factors that put a woman at increased risk so if um the woman has a history of any kind of depressive disorders pre-pregnancy or developed in that perinatal uh, period like pregnant during pregnancy or during childbirth it puts them at risk for postpartum depression uh, other things such as stressful life events during pregnancy birth and the postpartum period low socioeconomic support or marital conflict um, uh, if a mom, women who are struggling and suffering from substance abuse disorders are also at risk. And then the big one that we don't talk much about is that previous trauma, particularly sexual trauma, really does put a woman at risk for postpartum depression. Other factors are socioeconomic. So like we said before, it doesn't really discriminate on the basis of wealth. Um, however, we do know that our low income moms at our higher risk for developing postpartum depression. And that's really due to those, you know, social health inequities that put our lower income moms at risk uh, with higher stress levels and loss of control. Um, also immigrant status and uh, young moms are at higher risk for developing postpartum depression. And then the last major risk factor that there's not a lot of research on there, but we need to bring to the attention is healthcare provider trust and healthcare system trust. And this, you know, contributes to many health inequities. But if women during this very vulnerable yet empowering time of motherhood, of reaching motherhood, don't feel respected, treated with integrity and dignity. If their wishes are dismissed during that birthing process, it can really affect the way that they enter motherhood. And this is something as simple as feeling heard or not feeling heard during the birthing process to having a major traumatic birthing experience. Uh, and so bringing that to the present, you know, with all the COVID-19 restrictions that are hospitals and birth centers need to put in place to keep the population safe. This we really have to think like, how is this affecting our moms? Because there is a lower level of who is a, uh, of support, who is allowed to be in those delivery rooms, who's not allowed to be in those delivery rooms. You know, what is the trust in those systems that they're going to take good care of you when you get there? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was a really good information. That's so much information. And, and, and so then why do you, why is it important to bring um, paternal mental health to the forefront of a maternal care? I think yeah. you, you had some key points, but if you want to dig in deeper. Sure. So for me, you know, it's my personal opinion. I'm not biased or anything, but women really are that center of the family, the community, and I would argue society at large. And uh, perinatal depression has major consequences, not just for mom and her baby, but if there are other children involved for her family unit, and I would argue for our communities. So women who suffer from perinatal depression uh, report worse health outcomes than women who don't. And this is not just in that perinatal period. This is continuing, particularly if it's not treated, if they don't seek treatment later on in life. Um, with regards to their babies, we know that the infants born to women that suffer from perinatal depression already are born with higher uh, hor uh, cortisol levels, so that stress hormone levels are already higher in those babies. We also know that women who are suffering from perinatal depression tend to not uh, seek prenatal care 
as consistently as we would like, so they tend to not necessarily follow health recommendations for healthy pregnancies, and this puts them at risk for preterm deliveries and low birth babies. Um, and then also, once babies are born, if mom continues to suffer from perinatal depression and it turns into that postpartum depression, we know that they there's a lack of bonding, bonding or not a complete lack, but it's it's stunted and this affects the way you know of those face to face interactions with babies uh, and attentive with new babies. And we know that there are studies that show that those effects equal to developmental delays into 18 months of age compared to moms that don't suffer from depression. Um, so I would argue that if you really play that out in in not only that first year, first two years, it really has some major effects for the way that our children and our children's well-being move into society. And I think everybody can just take that moment to think about then how does that translate later on in life in life. Um, and yes, if you suffer from postpartum depression, you are at an increased risk for developing depressive disorders later on in life. So I think we should all be really passionate and just care about our moms and babies well-being and optimal well-being. Yes, I agree with you as well. So um, what treatment treatment options are there for women diagnosed with paternal depression? Yeah, so one of the great things is that there are treatment options, but it's not a condition that we're like, oh, well, like there's nothing to do about it. Too bad. There are great treatment options, and that includes psychotherapy, the big one being cognitive behavior treatment, and it really helps individuals change unhelpful um, patterns of thinking. So it builds up our muscles to be able to react skillfully act in a way that makes our symptoms better. Um, there's also pharm pharmacological treatments, often with antidepressants, and this is a conversation that mom would have with her provider to weigh the risk benefits of using uh, antidepressants, particularly while breastfeeding. And you know, each woman is unique, and so this con that conversation about treatment really ha needs to happen with uh, between the woman and her provider, and they will work out the best way to treat with either one option or the other option or a combination of options, um, but treatment is definitely available. Is there a treatment right now with COVID-19 pandemic um, for women who are seeking these services? Absolutely. So even though we're in this era of social distancing and yes, you know, there are things that have been shut down. I just want to uh, really reiterate that these services are available to our moms, to our dads, to you know all family members and to our entire community. So don't feel that just because we're in this crazy time of COVID that these essential services are uh, not available to you. Great, thank you, Cynthia. I think um, all the information you shared was really wonderful, and um, I know that um, people watching out there will take advantage and use the services that is needed. Um, before we end the interview, um, if women feel that they are experiencing paternal depression, who should they contact? Yeah, so I'm going to start out with the scary one, and that is if because we didn't really talk about it, but per, uh, postpartum depression really kind of puts you at risk for uh, a higher risk for suicide. And so if you are feeling right now as a woman in this, that, you know, like this is speaking to you, but you're feeling that you're at a point of endangering your life or the life of your baby, please call 911. And this goes through to family members as well. If you can see that you're, uh, wonderful mom has reached that point where there is a life endangerment. 911 is where you need to call for immediate assistance. Um, if we're not in a life endangering point yet, Ramsey County has a wonderful mental health crisis line that is in operation 24-7, 365 days a year. And I'm going to give you that number so everybody grab their pen, but that number is 651 Two six six seven nine zero zero, and then of course, if you're feeling you're kind of have your 
two weeks out and you're still feeling some of those symptoms more severely of those quote baby blues, please call your provider or your clinic and you can always just set up an appointment and talk with them. Well, thank you, Cynthia. And all that information that um, you shared will be in um, below our video. So um, thank you for taking your time today. Thank you.